Hello everybody, here we are today and we're going to be talking about the Columbus Blue Jackets and just some thoughts on this team through their first 19 games of the season and obviously things haven't been going well for them. So before we start, please make sure to subscribe if you're new to me or hockey, whatever the case may be. That being said, let's get on into it. So Columbus is not in a spot you're really hoping for if you're a Blue Jackets fan. They are on a nine game losing streak and sit 29th in league overall standings sitting in the basement where they're hoping to be away from at this point of the year. They've been a team that's had some high draft picks in recent years. However, feeling like with the influx of youth and some of the guys getting back from injury last year, like Zach Wierenski, maybe they could turn things around and have a good step forward for the season. However, through their first 19 games, they are 4-11-4. And, and again, with that nine game losing streak are kind of losing momentum about a quarter of the way through the year. So what are some things running through my head through this point? Well, the first thing is people will point out that five of these games have been one goal losses. And I understand that absolutely. I will also point out that with these teams losing momentum the way they are right now, you can say, well, it was really disheartening. And if we'd been able to turn some of those games around, that's great. However, at the same time, other teams are finding ways to win. And if the Jackets miss the playoffs, thanks to that nine game streak, you can't really take away a lot from that and say, well, we were so close nine times or five times. Either way, wins matter, and this is one of those deals. Another big thing is the lack of production from two big names, those being Patrick Laine and Johnny Gaudreau. I haven't had a great chance to look at their underlying numbers, but I do know this. In terms of simple sets, things are not going well for them this year. Patrick Laine, through nine games played, has three points, two goals, and one assist. Johnny Gaudreau has been able to play in all 19 games this season for the Jackets. However, he has seven points in that span, Two goals and five assists. Five of those assists were primary, so I guess all of his assists were primary assists, which are good. But with a player like him, averaging a point every three games isn't necessarily a good thing. Gaudreau ranks 11th on the team for points right now. And then you have a guy like Line Aid that you would expect to be up there as well. He is currently 17th on the team. So you have Alexander Texier, who is above Johnny in terms of points right now. That's kind of a shock. And then Emil Bimstrom actually leads uh, Patrick Line Aid for points, which again, kind of blows my mind as I'm trying to put that thought together. You're looking at this situation and wondering what's going on here with these two and kind of concerned a little bit. Those are my thoughts going through this right now. You're looking at two guys that have a lot of money tied up into them. You're looking at a guy in Johnny Gaudreau who has a long-term kind of future with this team in terms of what his contract is. And then you're looking at a guy like Laine who also has a midterm kind of length with the team three years remaining on his deal, I believe including this year. Both of them are getting paid very well. The problem is they aren't performing. So when you have two guys that are getting paid like that and they aren't performing, you start to panic, especially when a team's on a nine game losing streak and sitting near the bottom of the standings for the league overall standings. Another thing that concerns me too, looking at this is the fact that all of the teams below them right now and the total standings are literally playing less games than them. So if they're able to catch up, I do believe two of the teams can catch up to them had they played more games, maybe all three. Then you're looking at Columbus being the worst team in the league right now, which is not the way Yarmo planned this to go. And I know that a lot of people will talk about how the season started off on the wrong foot with the whole Babcock incident, and I totally understand that. And they, again, will point out the fact that they had some close losses during this losing streak. However, at the same time, you have to be a realist here and say things are not where they need to be for this team. This is a club that had a regular... I guess, attitude towards the playoffs where they were going to be there in the mid to late 2010s. Now we're looking at this possibly being four seasons without playoff hockey in Columbus. You're starting to wonder what is going on here for this team and what their expectation should be over their final 63 games. Going into this season, again, with getting guys back like Wierenski, you weren't seeing that they were necessarily going to be a playoff team. But you were hoping that maybe with 60-some games remaining, they could be hopeful to be at least near the hunt, or at least in the hunt. But at the same time, while there is 61, 62, 63 games remaining in the year for them, you have to feel like this season could very well already be done for them. And with that, I really start to wonder what's Yarmo's future looking like, or what are talks going on between him and the organization 
having a guy like him being the first full-time European GM that's been there for a decade, there's been some highs and there have been some really good moments not even that long ago. However, there's been some lows in there as well. And in recent memory, it does feel like there's a lot of lows. This is a team that by design wasn't really built to win in recent memory, but at the same time was able to acquire a lot of high-end picks that they were hoping could turn this thing around. And while some of these guys are still young and have plenty of time to develop, some of these guys may have not even had time to appear in enough NHL games to not be qualified or classified as a rookie, there are multiple guys that were high-end picks, top 10 picks, that have got plenty of NHL experience and still aren't looking the part. They are looking like at best third or fourth line guys, not what you want to see out of a 10 round pick uh, or a top 10 pick, I should say. Some of these guys, I don't even necessarily say are gonna be in the AHL, but I do think that, you know, if push comes to shove and they got on a cold streak, maybe they could be sent down to the AHL going for the long-term view, I guess, of their career. So with Yarmo having been in control of this team for so long, you're starting to wonder what the future could look like for him after this season. Good news is he can say, guys, we really need to perform through the rest of this year if we want to be able to keep things going in the plan that I envisioned. Not necessarily saying that his plan couldn't work. However, if you're looking at this being another bad year, then we could start to say, is Yarmo going to be on the hot seat or could he even be fired by the end of this year? The answer to that is I don't know, and at the same time, too, if Columbus is really bad, they're going to get another great high-end pick that could help them out in the immediate future. So it's not necessarily all doom and gloom. However, you have to look at the fact, too, that they have a lot of money tied up into certain guys, guys like Kerensky, guys like Gaudreau, guys like Line, and while you can move them out at the same time, too, the whole purpose of bringing in some of these names like Line and being able to retain him and bringing in Goudreau, who was another big name player, was to show that people would want to come to Columbus and stay in Columbus and build something. If they come and they can't build anything, then that's going to be a problem for the future plans for any GM inside the city as they try to get back to the playoffs regularly. But anyway, those are just a few thoughts on the Columbus Blue Jackets as they have had a poor start to the year. What are your thoughts on this team? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, please make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. Everybody stay safe. Have a great night. And you go hockey, all right. Goodbye, Brigadiers and Brigadettes. This is your captain signing off. Have a great night.